Hello and welcome to the third round of Coaches Sitting on Balls. I'm Todd, this is Chris, and we are two of the three coaches in Shrink Faction. Mike, he's here. That's here, it. here in spirit, living in Chicago, Connolly, is the third. And so this, if you haven't watched any of these yet, we shoot the shit about some stuff that we see in the gym and other things and um, talk about it and give you a little perspective, our perspective. You can do with it whatever the hell you want, but we think it's valuable. So um, we're going to start off with a little story about something that happened in our gym this week. And Chris is going to lead in with that. And then we're going to have a conversation about um, something that we're big proponents of in our coaching style, and that's called self-determination theory. So uh, San Cristobal, take care. So we're reading why we do what we do as a staff right now. And we just got done reading uh, Motivational Interviewing and Nutrition and Fitness. And it's interesting, like the, the interplay between the two books is absolutely awesome. And so what we've been working on ourselves and with our coaches is creating more autonomy, using questioning to help our clients extract out the answers that they already have. Um, because what we've learned through this process or we've gotten better at applying through this process is realizing that most people have the answers and they don't truly want you to tell them what to do. Like whenever we're told what to do, we kind of shut down. Um, and so we're working better as a staff to try and help to extract that information out of people while still leading them. Not just kind of going like, what do you think? What do you, you know, what do you want to do? Um, but I witnessed something really cool that went perfectly in line with why we do what we do this week. And that was that um, we do a weekly video vlog for the gym. And at the end of this past week's video, there was like a two or three minute segment on there where Todd was talking about creating autonomy, essentially, right? And one of our members, hopefully more than one, but one of our members that watched the video, uh, I overheard an interaction between her and one of our coaches. And essentially, I don't know what the question was, but she asked him a question, and he began to answer her in a question. And she cut him off almost immediately, and she was just like, screw autonomy, because she saw what he was doing. And at first I was kind of like, okay, she's just being playful because she saw the video. But as I listened to the situation, it was actually awesome because really what she was saying, in fact, was that she didn't know the answers because she didn't have enough of an understanding about it. So she didn't have this word for it. Competence. Competence um, in the subject to really be able to be autonomous. So she really wanted him to provide the answer. Once she had that answer of that one little thing that she wanted, then he probably could have pulled more stuff out of her with questions. So it was just cool to see, and something that we thought that we would chat about this week on Coaches Sitting On. Balls. So, it's interesting, I um, do a coaching presentation that is unfortunately named The Art of Coaching. I didn't fucking steal it from Dan John, although his did exist first, and then I saw that his seminar was called that, and I was like, well, son of a bitch. That's... But I'm not changing it because fuck it. So as part of that, I talk about self-determination theory because it's something that I've studied for probably you know, three or four years now, just by reading books and reading papers and applying stuff in the gym. And one of the things that I've noticed is, and you're not going to see this in a study, and you're not going to see this in a paper or anything like that, so don't go looking for it, is you can kind of apply self-determination theory on a spectrum, right? Somewhere between autonomy and relatedness. And it's not necessarily like a flowy, but you know what I mean. And then somewhere in there is competence. So, and, and <laughs> explain that. Oh, okay. I, just, I was like, go for it. Okay. I'm going to shut up. So, I'm going to throw It's great work on the So, some people need more of each. So, the goal is, is obviously to make people as self determined as possible and influence people in that way. But the reality is some people don't feel like they're ready to be completely self-determined because they don't feel competent in navigating the environment. Um, competence is kind of reinforced by um, here's the environment, here's the expectation, and I can ex exert the effort um, and display the skills that I need to, to navigate this environment successfully. And if we don't build that level of confidence in people, um, it's difficult, it's difficult for them to act completely autonomously. Um, so 
but one example from, we'll get to a few other things, but one example from that situation is um, our coach could have just simply asked the question, well, do you, knowing the context of the person and who the individual is, say, hey, do you mind if I just give you my opinion? Which is what she was seeking for anyway. But that's where you kind of, you kind of keep her autonomy, even though she doesn't want it. She really does. Um, and say, hey, do you mind if I can? Because then she still has the choice of whether to say no. And she's, yeah, she's entering into that into that conversation. And then from there, you can give the advice or the information that allows her to, to learn or, or become more competent or feel like she has a better grasp on something. Um, so how do we foster competence in this environment? Um, one of the things that we really focus on is matching exercise level, which seems as it seems obvious, but it's not as obvious as, as a lot of people make it out to be. So, um, and then also coaching towards mastery, right? So within our gym, we have kind of a system that works like low hurdle, big hurdle, low hurdle, big hurdle, low hurdle, big hurdle. So we give something uh, in everybody's program that kind of stretches them, stretches their abilities because that's where you have to have your abilities stretched to kind of start to feel competent in something. Like, the, the just knocking over the easy pins, it doesn't do enough for people because they have to really feel like they've developed a skill. And developing the skill makes people feel competent. Um, but we also have to build momentum and confidence. So that's why we build in the little purple. So, okay, I can do this, I can do this, I can do this. Boom, here's a little bit of a challenge. And then we can go from there. So we use that to develop mastery in people um, and coach them towards it. So from there, we... We try to progress people and we stick with things, right? So one of the big uh, maxims of our gym is don't you get bored. And it's 100% not our maxim. It's uh, from Dan John. And he told us a story one time in a QA and a about how he was making all this progress with a client and um, then he started changing things. And the client came to him and was like, hey, I was doing all this stuff and I was making gains and then it seems like you got bored and now I'm not getting the progress that I really had before. And it just struck him as profound. And he was like, you know, that's one of the things that we have to stick to as coaches is don't we get bored. So matching exercise level and coaching towards mastery are two things that are going to really make your, your people feel um, a lot more competent in their environment. So little hurdle, big hurdle, some kind of stretch you build in with a lot of other things in your environment that reinforce that. Um, and then, you know, I think one of the things that we have to keep in mind too is... Um, the reason that we're able to, to have any of these conversations, um, be them autonomy driven um, or talking about competence and things like that with our clients, is that we create an environment that's very um, relatable. We really love to our clients and we focus really on individualizing things as much as we can while also creating an environment that fosters community. And those things, that's what really opens the door for us to be able to to teach people in this way. So, um, anything to add? No, I mean, so if you're listening to this and you're kind of going, okay, like maybe this is your first time hearing this, I can give you my personal perspective, which is, Todd said he started looking into this stuff three or four years ago. This is probably, I don't know, what would you say, like four months that we've actually really been applying this stuff here? And, and maybe not even that long, but, uh, I, I heard him present on this at least two years ago, and I was like, okay, well, that makes sense. But then I came back and I'm like, all right, how am I going to apply this stuff? And it was a bit overwhelming. And what we've done now is, as a staff, we've been reading these books, we've been breaking them down, and we've been doing it in the micro chunks and saying, okay, we just learned this. How can we do this one thing better with our people? So if you're hearing this stuff and you're like, okay, this all sounds fine and dandy, but I'm coaching every day, this sort of could be an awkward transition. Um, chunk this stuff down and start to say like, what's one thing that I can do better to foster autonomy, foster autonomy with my clients this week, and then next week, and the week after, and the week after. And if you're looking for good resources on that, um, motivational interviewing, or, or uh, crucial conversations, mm -hmm. motivational interviewing and nutrition and fitness that we talk about, uh, why we do what we do, I think, are three really, really good books to get that ball rolling. And again, don't go nuts and try and digest everything from those books at once. Read a little bit, pick something to apply, work on that, build, build, build. And um, it's, it's, been, it's been awesome to see how that's transformed our coaching. So. Yeah.
Um, I think it's about a lot of times too is one of the things that we try to do is create as much context up front um, to make people feel competent enough to understand things. So like even from a position standpoint of teaching people what we mean about achieving certain positions and what certain exercises are supposed to look like and really spending a lot of time up front doing that kind of stuff so they have a level of expectation because expectation is important because if, if people feel like they don't have an expectation to meet for themselves or externally, which a lot of times we, you know, the whole external motivation and stuff is kind of poo-pooed on, but it's still necessary. Like people need to see a reason and an objective uh, to what they're trying to do. Um, we give that up front so people have that expectation, they have a directive, they have somewhere to go, and then since we do that really well up front, we're able to ask them the questions that, that allow them to really drive the process. So it's like, you know, when we coach someone, of course there are going to be times where like, we're like, hey, you know what, you gotta, let's work on this, this next step. But a lot of times it's, it's very interrogative. Like, hey, so what do you think you did well? Yeah, okay, well, what would you change? How are you going to do that? And since we've done the work up front to build those skills with people, it just makes our job a lot easier and it keeps them kind of direct in the path. Now, like you said, it, like, it exists on a, on, a, on a spectrum. So there are people that are naturally, what do I want to say, more uh, desire more autonomy. Everyone desires autonomy in some ways, but more outwardly, like, I'm in control and I need to feel that way. So you have to deal with them a little bit differently than you deal with the people that are in that place where they just want to feel competent with what they're doing. So um, think about that. So you might need to be a little bit more interactive, interrogative with someone that is autonomy dominant and someone that's competence dominant. It has to be a little bit more educational. Here's the expectation. Here's the information that you need. And then really hammer that home and then make sure that they feel good. And then there's the other people that are, are more related and stripping, especially up front. Like, and think about this in, in context of a new client when they come in. You know, there are people that just want to know what they got to do. There are other people that, how do I fit here? How do you feel about me? Those kind of things. And they're, they're much more related in this dominant. And you have to foster that in them before you can get to anything else. So it's really just an art of using this as a frame for relationship building and putting people in the right position to be successful from a psychological standpoint. Yeah. yeah they just said a lot there. So I think that's... I think that's probably going to be it. I don't know. No. How do we... I don't know how to end these things. I'm terrible at ending things. Like I just feel like if I dated a girl for like 15 years, she could have done very young. Would you start at 12? Uh, 7. 7. I dated from 7 until, uh, what year would that be? You were 10 and carried it from 23 plus 7. 22. 22. 22. 22. Yeah, 7 and 22. Seems like a good place to stop right there. I just as the coach was sitting on balls. And we'll see you next week. Next week.